So let's play. Right. Tonight we are going to explore an old problem, the problem of the one and the many. And why it's a problem? Ah, that's easy to explain. But there's another problem, which is going to go through the whole talk, it goes through all philosophy, and that's this one. We are awake, and we see things, and we talk, but while we are awake, and we see things, and seem to be clear about what it is we see, we don't have a clear enough idea of what shapes our vision. And so we fail to grasp how our own expectations limit that vision. That's the real problem. That's the real problem. Let's see if I can make it clear. Basic idea that we're going to explore is that the highest and most profound idea of the nature of reality is that it is one. And along with it is the idea that since it is totally partless, partlessness is its nature, matter of fact, Plotinus argues that its highest reality should really be called the partlessness rather than the one. What goes along with this idea, therefore, of the one, pure one, is that once you understand it, it's obvious. It has to be obvious, or you don't understand it. If you understand that it's obvious and it's one, then we can get to this problem. So it may take us a moment. So we're going to assume the Platonic view in this discussion of the nature of reality. The highest reality, therefore, is called the one. And being, as, being supra-perfect, it of necessity overflows and turns upon itself and returns. And this is the basic dynamic of all Greek Hellenistic philosophy. Another word for the one is the highest vision you can have of God. And we're going to talk about the difference between the idea of God and the idea of the one in just a short while. So before creation, then, we can talk about the nature of the one or of God, perfect, perfect in all respects. So perfect, therefore, that it overflows, as it were, and turns upon itself and returns to its source. At that moment of its return on its source, there is a recognition. There is a recognition. That recognition is because it returned to its source, and therefore there is a wonder and a joy that attends it. Since it recognizes its source, ah, in that recognition, it reaches what is sometimes called being, spelt with a capital B. And since its whole thing is a dynamic, there is a vitality to it all. Now, the Greeks, philosophers, put all of that together, sometimes with one idea and sometimes with another. But most often, they call it with the big word, being. Capital B, when it's used in this way. And that means it presupposes within it that there's a vitality to it. There's a recognition of its source. Therefore, by necessity, recognition presupposes intelligence. But 
Therefore, the very nature of reality overflows being so perfect. It has a dynamic that turns it upon itself, sees itself, and in that moment, intelligence, being, and vitality come into existence. So therefore, this realm is called being, intelligence, hyphen, vitality. Or, for short, being. The same process is said to take place now this, of course, is a metaphysical creation. In the same way, then, this too overflows, returns to its source. Same dynamic takes place. And that is said to bring into existence soul. And then, once more, soul and body, and therefore, this is the metaphysical creation, as it were, through these five stages here. The one being, soul, soul and body, and beyond that, of course, is just matter. Five stages. We want to talk about this, the highest concept of the divine called the one. And in order to talk about that, we want to contrast it with the idea of God. So now we're going to contrast this idea of the one and God. And why, in the game of philosophy, there's always the choice of which term to use, and among Platonic philosophers, it's always this. should always be with a capital, of course, that the one is chosen over the idea of God until the last step is made. So then, let's take a look. Let's consider, what are the associations and images that come to your mind when you hear the word God? Does it entail certain roles and certain actions that fit and are in accordance with that role? Right? Does the idea of God generate, naturally, a whole set of associations? Images. 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 And on the basis of those images, are you, the individual, required to take on certain roles to do and not to do? Does it also necessarily involve not only roles but actions? And does it also involve the idea that they are special times and locations that are necessarily involved when you talk about God. Like are there special locations such as churches and temples? Are there special times in which you can then become involved in churches and temples and actions and, and ways of being? that you then get involved even more fully in the images and in the associations. And I guess you would say, yes, all of that is true. And each person might